Okay guys, so um, this is going to be a uh, how to brew all grain primer, uh, just a quick one uh, for a very simple recipe. This is a uh, Belgian Saison and uh, for the, this video is aimed for people who have never all grain brewed before. I'm just going to give you short and simple steps on how to do it. Uh, I'm doing it in my kitchen, you can too. All you need is that a mash tun like that, which if you don't know what a mash tun is or you don't have one or you don't know how to build one, there's plenty of videos on that. That's not in this video. Go watch those videos first, get your mash tun, and once you have your mash tun, you can do everything I'm doing here as long as you have pots and things like that. So um, this is uh, intro. So um, I recommend you follow this recipe. If you like saisons, just do the same recipe with me and it'll make it even easier on you. If this is your first all grain brew, this would be a good one to try. So what I have here is 10 pounds of Belgian Pilsner malt and 0.75 pounds of Crystal's 20. Okay, and what I've done here is I have a, a mill, a grain mill, and I've run it through the mill and crushed it. And as you can see, the grain is nice and crushed. And the kernels are popped open and that's what you want, a nice good crush like that. So can extract all the good sugars out of it. That's what we're going to be doing. That's the difference between extract and all grain. In, um, in all grain, you're basically creating that liquid malt extract that you have in extract brewing. That's the extra step involved in all grain. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're taking the grain and we're extracting the sugars out of them and that's going to be our wort. And then everything from there on out is the same as extract brewing. We add the same kind of hops and you know, chill the wort down to cooling temperatures and pitch our yeast. So everything's the same from there. So follow along with me. Go out and get um, 10 pounds of Belgian Pilsner and 0.75 pounds of Crystal 20. And uh, most homebrew shops will pre-crush it for you. So if you don't have a grain mill, they'll crush it for you. Just be sure that you're going to brew in the next couple weeks afterwards because if you crush it too early and let it sit, it can uh, lose some of its viability. So. Um, Go did that and get a uh, Y Yeast Smack Pack. These are called Smack Packs. This is Y Yeast 3711 French Saison. And it's called Smack Pack because you literally smack. There's a little ins inside this pouch, there's a little pouch of yeast nutrient. And you just smack this pack really hard. Put one hand on this side, one hand on this side, and you just smack them together. And you bu the goal is to pop that pouch on the inside and what will happen is that yeast nutrient gets released and the yeast in there will basically start fermenting and this pack will swell up. It will start swelling. I'll show you later. Hopefully it swells. Um, sometimes you get a bad bag that has a hole in it or something. But it will swell up and that is basically like a mini starter. So, so get that, get that, and then get your hops. And for this one, like I said, we're going to do very simple here. I'm just using Northern Brewer, one ounce total. Um, I have two hop additions, one at 60 minute and one at 30 minute. I'll let you know when I do that. Just continue watching, but that's all you need is one ounce of Northern Brewer, the grain, the smack pack yeast. I'm going to use um, some additional things. This is called 5-2. It's a pH stabilizer for the mash. And I'm going to use some, well, I may not use this actually since it's a Saison. I'm probably not going to use that. Um, so yeah, as long as you have a uh, stainless steel kettle, at least five gallons, um, and then the mash tun, and then all this other stuff I showed you, you should be good. So, first step, which I'm doing right now, for this recipe in particular, so this is assuming you are doing this recipe exactly as I have it outlined. We want to heat up 3.61 gallons, approximately, of water. It can be tap water. Uh, I run it through a filter, as you see here. I have it connected to my sink, and it goes through this filter. So the water comes out chlorine free. Uh, you can buy bottled water from the store, go to Walmart, you can get the big jugs of water that's clean, um, distilled water, things like that. Or you can just use tap water. The general rule of thumb is if, if the water is good enough to drink, then it's good enough to brew with. So don't fuss too much about the water. But, you know, I just choose to, to um, filter it. Uh, pour three points, so the first step, pour 3.61 gallons of water into your pot and turn on the heat okay and we're going to heat up i have a nice little temperature uh, thermometer here i got from um where did i get this from i think bed bath and beyond or somewhere maybe even walmart 
and it just shows me the temperature and it has the set temperature that I want it to set to. We want to heat this up to 169 degrees. I have it set to 167 so it'll beep at me when it gets there just in case I'm on the other side of the room or something. But we're going to heat this up to 169 and then we will start our mash and I'll show you how that's done. So stay tuned. Okay guys, I told you um, yeah, there's plenty of good videos out there about mash tons but I'm just going to give you a brief uh, overview of what it is. Basically, this it's a cooler. We want to be able to maintain temperature in it, so usually use a cooler since it's good and um, good for insulation and things like that. Basically, just a modified cooler that has a ball valve, so you can open and let liquid flow out of here. And on the inside, here I have a st stainless steel braided hose. This is like a toilet supply line that I've cut the inner part out of. So it's basically all it is is a filter. It's a very tight filter. You can see the little holes in there. So what happens is we're going to mix this um, mash tun with water and those grains that I showed you and they're going to do their thing and then what we're going to want to do after it's done is drain off just the liquid and leave the grain behind. So that right there acts as a filter. The liquid will go into this stainless steel supply line and drain out the ball valve and all the grains will be uh, left behind. So that's, a, that's what a mash tun does. Um, for the science behind mashing and stuff like that, watch the other videos. I don't have time to explain that on here, unfortunately, but I just thought I'd let you know real quickly. That's a short and simple explanation. Okay, so we are, looks like we're at 100, 169 degrees, which is what we want to heat this water up to. Nice oven mitt. So I'm gonna take this out. <laughs> All right, so now we can turn the heat off. And like I said, what we want to do is we want to pour the water into the mash tun and then we're going to mix the grains in with that and let that mash. Now, like I said, if you don't know what mashing is, um, check out some other videos on mashing. I don't have time to explain that, unfortunately. But, so the first step is our 3.61 gallons of water that we heated up to 169. Be very careful when you do this. Sorry. First step is to pour it into the mash tun. Make sure your ball valve is closed so you don't have water leaking on your floor. Hot water. Okay, and then you put the lid on it. Keep that heat in there. Okay, so here's an optional step. You don't have to do it, but I do this. This is that pH stabilizer I was talking about. Um, this just helps stabilize the pH of the water and helps the mash perform a little bit better. But this is optional, you don't have to do this. So I throw in about a one tablespoon, so I'm going to put in two or three of these. Just right in, sprinkle it in. Okay. Once again, we want to conserve that heat. So we'll let that sit there, and that's just kind of heating up the cooler there, heating up the walls. <clears throat> and then the next step is to add our grains. Now, you want to do this kind of slow enough. So this is the grains that I said I have. It's about 11 pounds total. So you want to pour these in at a good rate. You don't want to. You want to avoid getting any clumps in here. Um, you want it to be nice and mixed, and it'll be the consistency of like oatmeal. You'll see here in a second. Hopefully, it's light enough in here that you can see. So you just pour and you stir while you're pouring. If you pour too fast, you'll get the clumps. You don't want that. And you don't want to do it too slow either, because we want to. We don't want this heat to get lost here. So the reason we heat it up to 169 is because after you add the grains in here, the temperature is going to drop a little bit. Okay, hold on one sec. So there's formulas and programs out there that can predict um, what your initial temperature needs to be, and that's how I came up with 169. But basically what I'm shooting for is for after I add this grain, I want the temperature to be 154 degrees. And that's my what's called my mash temperature. So hopefully, if we calculated it right, it should be close to 154. So continue adding your grains and stirring. 
as you can see it's a nice it's nice and mixed in there and we're almost done here see thickening up here getting the consistency of a nice liquidy oatmeal kind of consistency here there goes the crystal malt you can smell that get that nice and mixed in there get all good to the last drop okay so let me give it a couple good stirs here see that nice consistency nice and mixed in there once you're satisfied with that Take it off, put the lid on it. This is why we use a cooler because we want to conserve this heat. We're going to let this sit for about an hour and mash. That's what's mashing. So I'm going to take this over here out of the way. And this thermometer that I had, I'm going to go ahead and just stick that in the cooler. If you want to get a view of the thermometer here, I'll stick that down in there. Thermometer right there, the panel. So the probe just goes in the little. Yeah. So, and then we can read our temperature here. It's not going to be 100% accurate because there's going to be heat pockets in here. If you wanted it to be completely accurate, you'd have to circulate it the whole time. But it's going to be around the ballpark. If you look at it here, it's reading 153. We were shooting for 154, so we're pretty dang close. So that's that's good. And the goal for this. Um, yeah, it's 154. Perfect. Um, so the goal of having this um, cooler is we want to keep that at 154 for an hour. It's 530 now. So at 630 we'll come back. Well actually we're going to do a little step in between so we'll be back before then. But for now this is the mash. This is what's called mashing. We let this sit for an hour. The starches in the grains will be converted into sugars by the enzymes. That's what's going on in here. And what will drain out is the sugary mixture called wort. Okay guys, now that you're in the mash, and we're still waiting for this to, to mash, we want to heat up what's called our sparge water. Basically, and you'll see later in this video, what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to drain the liquid out of this mash tun into our boil kettle. And then what will be left behind is a bunch of grains. Well, those grains still are going to have, even though we drained most of the sugar out, they're still going to have a lot of sugar left in them that didn't get drained out. So, it's common to do what's called a sparge, which is basically rinsing those grains with hot water to extract those remaining sugars. So after we drain it, we want to pour more hot water back on top, let that soak through and drain out again, and that'll pull out all the remaining sugars. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. So for this specific recipe, going back to our process for this, I'm heating up 4.5 gallons of water again, and we'll call this instead of strike water, this is now called sparge water. And we want to heat this to around 168 degrees. That's typical for sparge water. So we'll have that heated up. So when we're ready to sparge, we'll have our water ready. So go ahead and heat up 4.5 gallons of water to 168 degrees. As you can see, we're 38 minutes into the mash and we're still sitting at 154. So this cooler is doing a good job. Next required step, pour a homebrew. Here I have a delicious Hefeweizen that I'm drinking. That's a requirement. Okay, so now it has been one hour exactly. The mash is done. We've heated up our sparge water. It's sitting at 168. I've turned the heat off there. So now we're going to start draining our what's called our first runnings. So the first thing I want to do is called a Vorloff. Because this thing has been sitting for an hour and the grain bed inside there has not settled compactly, there's going to be the first time we drain some of this off, it's going to be really hazy. There's going to be grain in it. So you'll basically you perform what's called a board loft. So it's a recirculation. It's just a way to clear up the mash. So we're going to drain this. As you can see here, you want to come closer. You can see how it's kind of a little bit hazy looking. So we're just going to drain until the beer, the wort coming out starts getting a little bit more clear. So I'm going to drain a little bit at a time and it's 
nice very and sweet. sweet. <laughs> and then, as you can see here, I'm going to just pour it right back into the mash tun on top. Just stand on my tippy toes to see over. You want to pour it as gently as possible so you don't disturb the green bed too much. Okay, so right back on top. And we'll drain a little bit more. And I'm going to put a paper towel down there. Random leaks here that happen. So this is the Borloff, so we're just going to do this a couple times until the beer starts running a little bit more clear. And then we'll do our first runnings. Okay, so we've Borloffed, it's running clear, so now it's time to drain off what's called the first runnings. So what we're going to do is, I've got a tube here that I've connected, and I'm going to sit it in the bottom of my brew kettle. And the goal here, you don't want to splash too much, you don't want to aerate the beer at this point in time. So you want to siphon very quietly, okay? Now here's the key. Here's the key to this. You want to drain this beer really slowly. The slower the drain, the more sugars that are going to get pulled out and the higher your efficiency, and that's always a good thing. So I'm going to open this up all the way just to get the siphon started. Once it starts going full, I'm going to close this back about three little, quarters of the way. A little, yeah, a little yeah. less than halfway closed. And you can look down here and see the, how much is coming out of the end of that tube there. As you can see, it's still there's still a little bit of grain in there. I didn't clear it up all the way as I should have. But yeah, I uh, actually redid, redid a Vorloff there because it was coming out too, too much. There's still a little bit in there, but you're not going to get it at all. But this is just to show you how slow you want to drain, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is what's called fly sparging. Normally, normally you can um, drain the whole thing out until it goes dry, then you dump all of your sparge water in, let it sit, and then drain that out. That's called batch sparging. I'm going to do what's called fly sparging because through experience I've found that it gains, you get more sugars out of it when you fly sparge. Um, it's not any more difficult, it's just you got to pay attention a little more. So batch sparging was what I described a second ago where you drain all of this at once and then you put all the sparge water in at once. Fly sparging is, we're going to monitor the flow rate here. As you can see in here, you're starting to see the grains. Okay, the liquid level has gone below the grain level. When it starts doing that, you put a little bit of sparge water on it and you keep doing that. Basically, you want to keep the level, the water level, right at the level of the grain bed, okay? So you're just going to be sparging as you go, and this increases efficiency. Uh, let's open this up a little more. Okay, so, and what you want to do is you don't want to dump the water just in one spot. You want to be able to spread the water out over the entire surface area of these grains, so all the grains, so the water goes through all the grains and you get the maximum amount of um, extraction. So here is a simple way. I have a fancier way of doing this. Um, okay, so just to use a simple pasta strainer, and you can hold it over, and I'll dip out my sparge water in this bucket here, and I'll just pour it. And you're going through these holes. The only reason I use a strainer is because these holes spread the water out, and it covers over all the grains. So once you get fancier equipment and stuff like that, there's a lot better ways to do it than this. But this is just the simple starting way to do it. And as long as you have a pasta strainer in your house, you'll be able to do this. Okay, so get a cup of the sparge water. This is very hot. Just throw this over. And if you can see down below there, you can see how the water is kind of showering. Looks like a shower. And it's spraying the grains. And we want it to cover all around. So we kind of move this around, make sure it's covering the whole thing. And we just keep pouring. Okay. And once the water level gets a, above the grain bed, pretty good, like that, we'll cut it off. And we'll wait. We'll, it's still draining, as you can see down here. It's draining this whole time. This is why it's called fly sparging, because you're sparging on the fly. So now you can see that the water level is above the grain bed. And we're going to wait for that to go right back down to the level of the grain bed, and then we'll sparge again. And we'll keep doing that until we sparge all of our four and a half gallons of water, or until we get the pre-boil volume that we want. And we want to get approximately six and a half, for this recipe, we want six and a half gallons of wort in this pot. The reason we want six and a half is because during the course of the hour long boil, you're gonna boil off some, I'm assuming about a gallon on this stove. And what I want to end up with is five and a half gallons. So we're gonna start with six and a half gallons. So 
I'm going to continue doing this fly sparge method. Um, there's really nothing more to it than what I just showed you. Keep the lid on the pot over here so this stays at 168. And just, you know, as the liquid level gets low, fly sparge. And keep going until we get our pre boil volume. Just a quick note on fly sparging. Um, another way to do it, as opposed to the colander, um, you can also take a piece of aluminum foil and just lay it on the surface here of the grain bed and poke holes in it all, all along in the aluminum foil and that kind of simulates the same thing as this and then you can just pour your water right on the aluminum foil and then it'll you know spread the water out across the grain bed so that's just a another method of doing it just to give you an update on how long this takes it's been about 20 minutes we're still draining we're about I don't know I'd say third of the way there so it's about, usually this does take close to an hour if you're doing it right. So don't get discouraged. This all grain is a much longer process than extract, but it does have a lot of benefits, including price. Grains are a lot cheaper. This batch right here cost me uh, 25 bucks for a five gallon batch. That's yeast, hops, grain, everything. So the freaking dry malt extract would cost that much just for the just for the dry malt extract would cost that much. So um, there, there are benefits and you can get beers that taste really, really fresh, really delicious. And um, you know, with extract, you never know when, when the extract was made, how long it's been stored, if it's any good, um, all that kind of stuff. You don't have as much control as you do in all grain brewing. So there are benefits. So make the switch if you can. Okay, so see, we've, we've dried this out. So I'm gonna throw some more sparge water on there but just giving you an idea how long this takes. Okay, so I've officially drained off all of the runnings. I had a little bit left in there, so I'm just draining into the sink. I got my pre boil volume. Now, <clears throat> there's not measurements on this pot. I just know um, from looking at the inside that that's about six and a half gallons, just because I've used it enough. But if you're doing this with a new pot, you might want to measure it out. So, as you can see, six and a half gallons of wort and now I'm cranking the heat on and we are going to get this to boiling so from here on out this is the same as uh, regular extract brewing basically what we've just created there is our um, liquid malt extract or our dry malt extract mixed with water when you do extract brewing so we're going to start this get it to boiling and then we'll add our hops and um, <clears throat> go from there just as we would an extract the next step is to take a sample of the pre-boil wort. It's going to be really hot, so put it in the freezer. Don't forget about it and let it freeze. But you want to put it in the freezer and let it cool down to around 70 degrees so we can take a gravity reading for our pre-boil um, gravity so we can see how good our efficiency was. So I measured the uh, initial gravity before the boil and I got 1.045, so we can use programs such as this program called Beersmith here. This is a fancy tool. You can input recipes in here and it can, uh, it'll estimate your original gravity, your IBUs, your color, all that good stuff. And so you can kind of know how you're doing um, as you go along. So what I did is this is the recipe for the Saison that I'm brewing now. Uh, I went ahead and put in that I measured 1.045 as my original, uh, or as my boil gravity, as you can see here. My camera's a little bit blurry but measured boil OG 1.045 and then right under here it says measured mash efficiency 74.3 percent so with a 1.045 uh, initial gravity before the boil we're getting about we got about 70 close to 75 percent efficiency on our mash so what's gonna happen now is we have six and a half gallons in there we're gonna boil off a gallon so that gravity will rise because the the wort it will become more concentrated because some of the water will be boiled off so our gravity should go up from 1.045 to somewhere near 1.054 which is what they estimate so that should be our initial gravity okay as you can see we're at 207 degrees we're almost to boiling and yep so you want to, this is the time I'm sure you know this if you've extract brewed before need to really watch for boil overs so 
We're going to let this get to boiling. Um, then we're going to add our first addition of hops, which is 0.6 ounces of Northern Brewer. I have weighed out here. Pellet hops. So go ahead and get those guys ready. Here's what I was talking about earlier. See this smack pack is swelled up. So that means the yeast are active and they're viable. So this should be pretty good. Uh, the yeast should not have a very long lag time. They should start up really fast. Alright, so just waiting for this to boil and then we'll go ahead and add um, our first addition. Okay, it looks like it's starting to boil. So I'm going to let it get a really good boil going and then we're going to add the hops. Okay, so we have our boil going decently on this stove here. I've got 0.6 ounces of Northern Brewer hops. I'm going to go ahead and add them. Now be very careful here. This is where you want to watch out for a boil over. So I probably shouldn't be holding this camera. Okay, and they're in. Got my hand on the uh, on the temperature controller down here in case this wants to boil up. As soon as you add hops, it tends to flame up a little bit or to boil up a little bit. Looks like we're safe for now. So that's uh, it's 8:35. So that's our first edition. So we'll go for one hour from here. And the only other edition we have is a 10-minute edition, which is point. Let me check. 0.25 ounces of Northern Brewer at 10 minutes. And that's it. This is a very simple recipe. Um, then we'll chill down the wort using our wort chiller here. Uh, if you don't have a wort chiller like that, that's fine. You can use a traditional ice bath. It, it'll just take longer. But uh, we need to chill it down and then we will put it in our fermenter and pitch our yeast, which is activating. All right, there's 10 minutes left in the boil, so I added the last addition of hops, which was the 0.25 ounces of Northern Brewer, and then I put my wort chiller in here while it's still boiling to sterilize this thing. And um, I'm gonna wait 10 minutes and then we'll start chilling. Okay, so we finished the boil and we have hooked up the wort chiller. We have the cold water coming in, goes through the copper coil. Oh, you can see it's really hot in there. Goes to the copper coil, then comes back out this other cord right here, and this water should be pretty hot. Yep. So it's transferring the heat out of this and into the sink. So we're cooling down the wort here really quickly, and um, this should take about 20 minutes or so, and then we will put it in the fermenter and pitch our yeast. If you don't have a wort chiller like this, just use a standard ice bath or whatever you normally do to cool your wort down. Okay, so now I've cooled the wort, poured it into my bucket here, and it looks like, and we got slightly above five and a half gallons. This mark right here is about six. This is a six and a half. This is approximately five and a half, that first one. And it looks like the water level, or the beer, the wort level is about at the top of my finger right there. So it's probably like, 6.65 or so. I mean 5.65 gallons or so. But anyways, so now I'm just going to take the uh, Y yeast smack pack. I'm not going to be able to show you this because I don't have enough hands. I'm just going to open this up and just pour the yeast in. Give it a good shake to mix it and you put the lid on it and that's it. So that's um, a quick primer on all grain brewing. Uh, if you want, just follow my recipe. Follow exactly what I did. If this is your first time doing all grain, it'll be a good beer. It'll be quick and easy, and you saw how simple it was. So it just took a little time. It takes a little extra time, but it's well worth it. So go out and try it, and then let me know how it comes out. Cheers, guys.